more minutes, maybe. Um, shall we start? You guys do not, do you want to come around the table so Celine can see your beautiful faces if you want to ask her questions? You can, you can hit it because that mic doesn't. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, Christina and Dakota join us as well. So, um, hello everybody. Welcome to our next industry guest talk. I think this is the eighth one. We have two more and uh, this semester, and uh, that would be um, the wrap of industry guest talks. I always invite a successful, motivated graduate students uh, to give a first hand look at what looks like industry when you graduate. Celine has graduated in 2019 from um, animation pathway and she works at Weta as motion capture tracker. I should I I don't know if I told you Celine uh, I, I was invited to Weta for a as part of like a, um, they invited visual effects lectures. So it was like few of us and they wanted to, um, the, the, the point of them, all the, all the meetings and conferences was how um, to encourage students and how to make them ready for the industry. Um, and they showed us your showreel as one that they liked it. And it was a oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a point of pride for me because I said, "Oh, that's Celine." Oh, okay. So, um, prior to this position, Celine has done um, some freelancing, um, and then um, joined Weta and worked on um, just right away worked on uh, Avatar: The Way of Water. Which is amazing, you know, your very first experience would be such a blockbuster movie. OK, enough of me introducing um, Celine and I'll pass it to you. Cool, um, I might just share my screen. Uh, like usual, oh, Miriam is here as well. Hi, Miriam. Uh, as Hi, usual. Um, Hi there, good to, good, great to see you. Hey. So, so it's uh, any any time whenever anyone have a question. This is like again, as I said, as usual. Uh, you already know it's a it's a informal chill uh, discussion between us. So if you have any question, uh, open your mic, uh, to online people, and ask questions. And the people here, you just ask me, and I pass this little mic to you, so you ask the questions. Okay, go ahead. All right. Um, I mean, Hussein pretty much covered everything about me. Uh, I'm Celine, and I'm a motion capture tracker at Weta Digital. Um, so today I'll be covering where to begin, especially right after uni when you graduate. Um, what it's like in the industry, uh, work-life balance, and also I'll cover freelancing. So, 
so before all this, right after I graduated, I think it was three years before I joined Weta. It was pretty tough, but um, I think within those three years, I just did a lot of uh, portfolio work and just trying to collab with local artists as well. Um, I think the biggest struggle between those three years is rejections from companies, which we probably will all get. Um, it's normal, but it's also good practice as well. Um, and at least you get your name out there to companies and people. Um, and also just comparing yourself to other people, like you see your other uni mates getting jobs before you, or you see their show reels and whatever. But I think it's good to know that everyone has a different skill set. And within that time, it's important to find out what you're interested in, what your strengths are, and just to build on those rather than trying to learn everything all at once. It's good just to pick a specific skill set to work on because in the industry, all these roles are quite specific unless you're a 3D journalist. Um, when they see your portfolio, they want to see just what they're looking for. And um, I guess just, just apply to everything as well. Um, even if they're not hiring, it's good to apply to their website directly because at least they'll have your name down. And if there's any opportunities in the future, they can always reach out to you. Do you um, remember, do you have a statistics of how many jobs did you apply for? Oh, so many. It was <laughs> actually so sad. That's why I moved to Wellington. <laughs> um, Auckland was just too competitive. and. I think at the time when I was applying, it was during COVID time. So the people uh, that were yes, they were looking yes. for, yeah, it was all experienced people rather than juniors just because they didn't have the resources to train up people. But mm. I think now it might be a little bit better off. But yeah, um, just don't be afraid and apply to everything, really. Like even if it's not what you've studied. So for example, if you study VFX or animation, you could still apply to like graphic design or even marketing, just somewhere in the door just to get some experience working with companies and in, in the big team as well. Um, but like before all that, yeah, so this is just how to get your foot in the door. Um, so when you're in uni, just use all the free, uh, what do you call them, programs and everything, because once you get out, they're expensive and you know, it's kind of hard to um, build one if you don't have the um, programs. So start early, um, build a portfolio and keep adding to it, even if it's small projects, like personal projects or um, uni projects, just add it to your portfolio. And um, I think you guys are still doing the internship, aren't you, for the third year? Yes, third year uh, still doing um, professional practice, yeah, which yeah. they have to do an uh, internship, yes. Yeah, so that's also really good to put on your CV as well. Um, mm. It's a good way to get a feel of how things work in the industry and also people will remember you. So like that's, if you reach out in the yeah. future, yeah. That's a very good point, oh, yeah. very good, very good point. Actually, it was discussion between Michael and I, Michael, just did some photogrammetry internship for a photogrammetry job, which I think is very valuable if he starts reflecting it into his CV. And same to everyone else. If you do internship, um, as as Celine says, that is that is a job, right? That that is something that they the the future like employer may look at it. Yeah. Um, Sorry for interruption. No, that's all good. What was I saying? Uh, internships, yeah. Um, that's just a really good way to network as well. So for my internship, I worked at I think Watermark, and they're like mm. a collective company where they just do basically everything. So they're generalists. And in that company, I got to try out just different things like 3D or 2D 
um, or I think it was like game design as well. And from there, I kind of found out what I really wanted to do, which was none of them. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting that, like, you know, you touched on many different things. Yeah, it's, it's just good to, like, try out and find what you like. Um, and also sign up for competitions, um, film festivals and stuff like that, just to get your name out there um, and just to network because networking is pretty much 80% of how you get into this industry. Like it, it's sad and it kind of sucks, but it's true. Um, and these two links here, uh, where I kind of got some of my jobs um, while I was trying to look for a job. So the big idea, they just have... Um, people just post out projects and anyone can sign on. You just have to like submit a portfolio or CV. Um, same with freelance. You just put up your, all your works and then people will just kind of contact you if they find something you like. Um, so the first one is idea. That, yeah, as an yeah. in New Zealand website, the second one is a worldwide, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which one did you so get the, more positive feedback New Zealand um, yeah yeah sometimes um, especially because of time zones with foreign people it's quite hard to communicate and also they mm. kind of have different ways of working um, mm. I'll get into that with freelancing but the laws in America it's very different to the laws uh, here yeah right yeah right. but yeah the big idea is where um, I got the job for the whale sculptures that were placed around Auckland Harbour. Mm. So that was one of them. And on to freelancing. Um, it's, it's quite scary, freelancing, just because, you know, you don't really know when you first start, you don't really know your boundaries and everything. So it's really important to create contracts and have boundaries just because when you first start off, you kind of price yourself really low or you'll agree to work for free, but that's not really right just because you're putting the time and effort into it and you kind of have to get income somehow as well. Um, and it really depends on the type of people as well. Sometimes when you put out a contract or put out a price, the client might actually turn it down just because they expect a lot of freelancers to work for free or just be paid by exposure. And you do feel quite bummed by that sometimes, but that's just the reality of it. And don't be afraid to turn down jobs as well if they're not treating you right or paying you fairly. Um, and onto different clients as well. So usually local artists uh, is where I would start just because you can meet up in person and you can find out who they really are, if they're sketch or not. But if there are clients from overseas, you don't really know if they're like going to scam you or anything. Yeah. So it's, yes, yeah, quite important to do your research. Like if they say they're from a company or anything, research the company before starting on anything, because then you're just kind of wasting your resources on something that you're not going to get paid for. And with the US as well, there's a law where they can actually take other people's art and they ask you to alter it and that's completely fine. That's just a US thing, whereas in New Zealand it's not because that's kind of plagiarism. But mm -hmm. yeah, I found out the hard way. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. After You've a bit been of scammed research, then. I have been scammed. <laughs> so yeah, no, freelance yeah. can be a bit sketch Must be sometimes. very frustrating after days of working. Yeah. yeah, um, just like not being paid as well. And just in the very beginning, it's just important to set up a contract and set up increments of payment just so. Yes. Even at the very end, if they decide to not keep your project at all, at least you've been paid for what you've already worked on. Mm. Um, mm. And also just be reasonable with payment as well, just because you're starting, you might price yourself like, I don't know, $10 an hour. But if you think about it, the minimum wage right now is what, $21. So it should be around that. 
Mm. Um, and also with when they give you briefs and everything, it really depends on the client. Sometimes they give you free reign, like, uh, can you design me a poster for this? But they don't give you any um, like boundaries or anything. Just make sure that you ask a lot of questions because sometimes oh. when you think you have free reign, you're like, oh, okay, so I'll make a rainbow colored or whatever. And they end up not liking it. Then, you know, you have to redo it all over again, but still be charged the same amount. So it's just important to ask about like, what mood they want, what aesthetic they want, um, what the time frame is. So, you know, how much time to spend on something. And I remember, um, yeah, yeah. I remember when I was doing freelancing, I was asking them to give me some references. Like what's, so because yeah. everyone who comes to you, they have seen something and they have, so, oh, something that looks like that thing, that, you know, like kind of artwork or somehow, or somehow between this and that. So they have a collection of references in their mind or in their computers, so they can, you can communicate. This is, thank you for mentioning this very important note that um, have a contract and start with a lot of communication and asking a lot of questions. Yeah. I mean, that's just the same with any job. It's not just freelancing, yeah. but. Yep. Yeah, that will just save you a lot of pain down the line. Down um, the line. And also, I guess, get used to, like, feedback and criticism. Just because, like, in uni, you do get, like, feedback and stuff, but they're not as harsh as it would be when it's, like, with clients sometimes, just because you're actually dealing with money. I mean, most of the time, they are pretty nice about it, and it's not harmful or anything it's constructive but sometimes it feels like a slap in the face and that's how it is <laughs> but um it's good to just kind of separate like it is just work and it's not anything against you personally it's just the situation that you're in um yeah moving on so these are some of the things that i worked on during my freelance um on the top left those are 3D animations I did in Blender, yeah, um, last year for a for some background animations for a theatre show that was shown in the Civic, I believe. So that took around maybe around a year, and this was all kind of during like before um, I joined Weta as well. Um, the what I'm left is the Auckland Library card. Some of you might have seen it around. Um, this is what I mean about joining competitions and stuff. It does really get you exposure and people will start to recognize you. And it looks good on the CD as well because, you know, things are circulating. Um, that is very then, pretty. I wish yeah. I wish you would have put like a big, big size of that photo. Oh, you have it. Oh, I did. Yes. Oh. oh, by the way, Alice nice. is here. Hi. Uh, <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> so, do you remember Alice? Alice, will, um, uh, have you guys met? Ah, oh, okay. Can I can I see that one, Alice? Oh, look at this! You did this one, Celine. Yeah. Oh, this is so gorgeous. Oh, and in the back says artist credit Celine Chan. Oh, this is wonderful. I share it with <laughs> everyone. Okay. Oh, embarrassing. Wow. You're famous. <laughs> no, no, but yeah, I guess that's a way to kind of get your name around as well. Um, and the middle one, the infographic looking one, that was the one I worked with uh, Wax Eye. I got through one of our temporary lecturers, Paul. I don't know if you remember him, but yes. yeah, he, yes. I reached out to him during COVID to see if like I could just hop on any project and he was nice enough to let me work on something and this was like a cancer awareness um infographic video thing um and that was really fun and I think that was when things started to look up as well because then through Paul I met like other people who knew other people in Weta and then you know it's all about networking um and then I also did some menu design. This was when I was still working in hospitality. Um, the restaurant manager there was nice enough to let me like design their menus 
just because I was really desperate just to like get something on my portfolio and this is just white and wongs down by the viaduct so yeah that was my three years there <laughs> and um the whale tales you might have seen around town like yes. maybe two years ago yeah yeah so that's me and Janet Janet and I collabed on um these sculptures during COVID as well and that was just another really good opportunity because there were photos circulated articles circulated and then people start knowing our names and now Janet is with me in Weta as well in the same position yes yes I met I saw her last last year or so and I and I heard the news um yeah very very happy for so f for you so it's Jenny and Janet and and you like many of of that group are working together now yeah um that's quite funny that's another important thing is to actually keep in touch with your uni mates um yeah. and just don't burn any bridges just because the industry as big as, as it is it is quite small mm -hmm. in a way where everyone knows each other and sometimes it's good to keep in touch to see where people go and then you might get some connections from there mm. um and same with lecturers as well like it's just good to know where people are and just like see what opportunities or doors open for you um yeah moving on so we'll talk a little bit about um the industry uh the common ground between uni freelancing and the industry is just really communication and time management i'll say time management is one of the most important ones um in uni if you don't finish something on time that's kind of completely fine it's on you it's just your grade going down or you're just letting your teammates down but in the industry there's a whole pipeline that gets affected so if you kind of procrastinate and don't work on something then down the line there's other departments waiting for that same shot so it's a kind of just snowball um so yeah it's kind of not just on you it's just important to keep on top of stuff um but if you can't do it like then that's completely fine as well as long as you communicate with your production manager most of the time they're flexible um and they'll understand it's just important that you'll communicate and then they can just kind of communicate down the line um and it's also important to like not push yourself too hard or know your limit because sometimes in the industry i mean during crunch times it's crazy crazy hours and long nights and long days just like uni when you do your um assignments and everything um it's just important to kind of set a limit for yourself and especially now a lot of companies are hybrid so you work in office and work at home so during my first year a lot of times I actually took a lot of work home just because like I was falling behind or because I was new I felt bad that I wasn't learning fast enough so I'll work in the office go home and then continue working at home and that was just quite um damaging for mental health as well mm. um yeah so it's just really important to have a balance um and just cap your hours and kind of just know when to stop and if the pressure is getting too much don't be afraid to reach out because I mean your manager and everything they're human as well so they'll understand that you know if a workload is too much then they'll just assign less or um they'll give you a bit of a break and um yeah um and I guess I think I mentioned this before as well freelancing and in uni is where you find out what you actually really want to do so even when people actually apply for a role and get into the industry that role might not be what they want and this is why people switch departments and everything so don't be afraid to just kind of like try something out and for a year or two and then just move on because that's what a lot of people do and that's also where you find out like what is an interest or passion and what's a strength because sometimes like people thrive off from being in a career that's their passion and that's great but for some other people 
it's you kind of lose that passion and you kind of feel burnt out as well so um it's kind of good to have that line where it's like for example your hobby is animation but what you're really good at is actually video editing and that's kind of fine as well um that's kind of like myself so like I actually really like um animating and painting and more hands-on stuff so that's my hobby but I think if I worked in that industry I'll actually stop liking it yeah so um that's it's a very fine line yeah it's a very fine line and yeah. that's something for you to find out for yourself yeah. and everyone's different so yeah um, everyone's different yeah and in the industry um if you get like a kickback or if you get a shot sent back or um if you get like a little chat like hey can you hurry up or something like that don't feel too bummed about it it's all part of the process and I mean we're constantly learning so um that's one way that you will improve is by getting feedbacks and if you are in a tough spot um don't be afraid to ask for help just because um everyone's kind of in the same boat and everyone's a team um yeah so yeah Right. I think that um, ends my talk. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, the the people online, feel free to uh, ask your question in a comment or open your mic. Um, it was um, insightful, and you know, like I'm I'm really glad that you shared the three years before you start working in a big company and all your journey through uh, freelancing and learning um, like what you like. Um, you know, what is your daily life look like now? You know, um, this uh, is what, a question I always ask people who join us, like what's a daily life of a motion tracker artist <laughs> at Weta? I mean, just like you announced really, um, most of the time that really depends on the hours. So if we're on crunch, we don't really have a life outside of work that much. <laughs> we'll just go to work, go home, and then just do our own thing. But right now, since we're like kind of not too busy, kind of chill, um, we do just do our with own a, stuff. Yeah, do you start with a daily and they're like, you know, what's the order of like, on a, you know, like the detailed order of the, the steps you go through every day? Every day, yeah, most of the days, Ooh. like, <laughs> like personally, I wake up. But ready, anything, you know, anything, anything, any, you know, give us a glimpse of anything that could be helpful for the students uh, to have some understanding and, and and leverage their expectation when they join the industry. And then after this, we go to Miriam's question. Miriam has a question. Okay, go ahead. Um. I mean, just like any other job, it's really important to have breakfast. I'll say that just because it keeps uh, you yes. awake the whole day. <laughs> yes. um, also really important to have lunch so you don't get too sleepy in the afternoon. Um, and play a sport because in our industry, you're sitting a lot. Like I think 90% of the time you're just sitting down. Um, uh, yeah. Move around is really important and get a standing desk. <laughs> that helps yeah. as well. Yeah, it really hurts the back when you're sitting for like 12 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, and take breaks. Um, oh, like okay. if you're going home after a long day and you've been staring at the screen for a long time, don't watch TV because it's um, just so bad for you. It gives you yeah. headaches. But um, yeah, just get outside, see the sun on the weekend, um, move around, play some sport. Yeah. Fantastic. And meet people outside of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maria. Um, Celine, you, you had a tremendous success with your third year um, capstone actually being selected at Cannes, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to mention that oh, you, didn't, right. you didn't talk about it. Yeah, yes. but I'm just wondering, you know, about the positive effects of that. Did that ex increase your exposure, do you think? Um, yes, it did. I think that's what I meant about submitting to competitions and film festivals because that actually did help with uh CVs and stuff 
like people will see that on your portfolio that like, oh like that's great it's, it's, it's an achievement but yeah it did actually help and Weta did mention it as well well for the people who don't know uh Cannes Festival is a is one of the most credible film festival out there and um I remember Celine capstone project the one that you guys are working on has been um nominated for the Cannes Festival which was like a moment of proud for all of us to be honest um yeah you're very humble you didn't talk about it <laughs> uh, it was so long ago <laughs> okay but it, it, it was absolutely yeah. amazing yeah, yeah. any Thank questions you. here yes Oliver um so you're talking about crunch time um what kind of hours do you usually expect when you're in crunch? Uh, it depends on what department you're in, but for us, it can range from 50 plus. Oh, yeah, a week. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, uh, I had something else, but I can't remember. Yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions? Um, also, one thing I wanted to mention, you... Um, one thing that you just brought right at the beginning, which was very important, and I want our third year students to keep that in mind, is the 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 skill sets you have and the jobs that are out there. Sometimes when you don't find a job, um, Celine can cast some light on it. Uh, there there are some jobs out there, but they don't match your skill set, and you don't get a position. So that should not be disappointing for you. Uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that and um, you you talked about it. So if you want to like have, I don't know, three advice for our students who will graduate in two months, what they will be. Oh, exciting. Yes, um, very exciting. Advice on graduating. <laughs> They're a bit tired, but like <sighs> excited at the same time. Oh, I remember that time, the capstone time. It's tough, isn't it? Um, I guess it's it's okay to feel a little bit lost right now. Well, not exactly lost, but just not sure what you work in from there. Just because as a graduate, everything is still quite new and you're not really exposed to those actual skills until you start working um but i think i'll just say for now just keep practicing and keep building on that portfolio um and keep applying to jobs no matter what they are um even if they're not hiring just reach out sometimes it's really good to actually email or contact the producer or director of that company just even for a coffee um because again that's networking it's good to get your name out there and it's if you had any questions about the industry you can ask them as well like what it's like um what their pipelines are like or what just a usual day of the job is like just to get a feel of what it's like um and do this for a lot of companies because every company is different and it's good to find the right one for you yeah fantastic amazing very good talk, Celine. I, I really uh, am thankful of the time you dedicated. Any last question, anyone online? Oh, yep, Ian has a question here. Uh, hey, so I forgot if you mentioned this already, but like you've worked both freelance and industry and obviously gone to uni. Which one was the better experience uh, in for you personally and also like why? Oh, better experience. I'll say definitely industry, um, just because there's just so much more to learn and room for growth, and um, you're exposed to so many new and exciting things. Um, and working in film is just like a big <laughs> for me. So um, yeah, and also the stability. Um, freelancing is like it comes and goes. It's not like a constant flux of work. So um, you never know when the next one's going to come around. But if you're in the industry, at least you're you're more or less stable. Even though I'm a contractor, it's just like you constantly have work to do. Yeah. 
All right. Any other questions? OK, um, thank you so much. Uh, it was a great talk. Uh, we are very um, pleased by your talk. Yeah, let's have a let's have a talk for Celine, uh, Thanks, good luck with yeah, good luck with uh, with your journey into industry. We enjoy following you and seeing you progress through the ladder. Thanks, uh, for everybody here, yes, yes, go ahead. Good luck to um, oh, the uh, yes. <laughs> For for anybody here, uh, next week uh, industry talk uh, is uh, uh, Jessica Miller, the head of ATD at Weta. So um, don't miss out that um, talk as well. Thank you so much, Celine. Cool. And thank you. You know, pop in whenever you come to Auckland. <laughs> Will do. Cheers. Yeah. Bye.